my sister and I were unaware of the true circumstances of our mother's death until about eight weeks or so ago when we were contacted by her solicitor um, to say that a whistleblower had been in touch with him and that um, um, our mother didn't die in the way in which we believed she did. It, it actually caused her uh, to have a fairly painful death. She lingered for nearly 13 hours, I think the records show, uh, before she finally succumbed uh, to her illness. My mother suffered in distress, discomfort, probably a great deal of pain for over 13 hours. Not only was her death, um, was her death agonising, but the days prior to it uh, were as well, as, um, as a particular rogue doctor um, had made decisions about, um, about when my mother was, uh, was going to be terminated. In about September 2007, I was sitting at my desk and I received a, a file, a complaint from a doctor, um, and it came to me not through a verbal instruction, but it was simply placed in my in-tray. So when I came back to my desk, looked at my in-tray, there's a file in there, I picked it up, I began to read the file. And what I found in that was that it was a doctor making a complaint that a colleague of his that he worked with had prematurely ended the lives of two people and had attempted to do it to another. It, it became much more clear to me that the, that the general public absolutely should be protected from being from living or dying, depending on the whim of a doctor who might kill you if he took a dislike to something you or your relatives said. First of all, that the allegations themselves were alarming, that they were coming from another medical professional, but that the, it appeared to me at that stage, and it was clear to me, that this file had been with the medical board for three months. So for three months, members of the board had seen, three months earlier, they'd seen these allegations and had done nothing. What that meant was that doctor involved or at the centre of those allegations was still working unrestricted um, and was still a risk to patients. I immediately took that file to my manager and I said to her, these uh, allegations are alarming. We need to immediately make contact with every board member. We need to stop this doctor from working immediately and we need to refer this to the police. The board doesn't have the capacity or the resources to investigate something of this magnitude. She laughed at me. Her response was, Joe, doctors don't murder patients and the medical board does not refer doctors to the police or allegations of anything to the police about doctors. Well, you know, mum's already been gone five years. Mm. Since we've uh, met with the whistleblower, um, we've been able to, um, to push my mother's uh, case further. Um, we've both, uh, well my sister's been interviewed by police, I've, been, I've spoken to police over the phone. Um, their investigations I believe are, are merely uh, to fill out paperwork. I don't believe that there's any in-depth investigation that has gone on into it um, and that eventually there'll be a report that's released but it will be a, uh, a whitewash of the circumstances. The police have been anything but helpful they they did um, have a chat to me. There were no statements ever given to the police by myself or my brother. Um, the police felt on the day that they spoke to me that really they didn't feel that there was any case that the doctor had to answer. They had looked at all of the evidence and felt that some doctors have to do things that for families are perhaps rather painful, but it's something that doctors have to do. Well, I've been informed that the police are having general chats with people. And the one thing that disturbs me about this as a former investigator, police investigator, who's investigated murder inve matters or, or murder allegations, is that first of all, the original records that that are held uh, for this patient at the hospital are exhibits. They've never been seized by the police. That's quite clear from these records having been gathered from those originals that are still at the hospital. The second thing that's critical to me is that 
people that were present on this day who had conversations with this doctor and can give first-hand accounts about what he said and did uh, were interviewed, including the daughter and the, and the son of this patient, and neither of them have had statements taken. Neither of them, you know, have been interviewed in any detail or in any way you would normally interview somebody if you were doing an, a murder investigation. So all of that indicates to me that the police are not seriously investigating this matter for murder. They're simply going through the motions because this matter is currently in the media. They're going through the motions to appease uh, the son and daughter of this patient and to appease the public and lull them into a false sense of security that this man is safe. We, we know he's still working now, five years after the events of this. And we also know from my investigations that there are many other, this is not the only patient he did this to. There are other cases and other evidence that he's done it to other patients and that he's done it recently, uh, that he's been involved in the death of patients that are suspicious. Yes, my mother's medical records support all that Joe Barber has been able to, um, to unearth. You know, we see now from the records that we've gathered, which I reviewed five years ago, which the medical board had five years ago, uh, clearly show that what I'm saying is true, that the patient did not want to end a treatment and that the doctor intervened and ended the treatment which caused her death. Do I believe the police have looked at my mother's medical records? I believe that the police have not even opened my mother's medical records. Perhaps they have heard from someone else things that perhaps may have been in my mother's medical records, but what they told us was totally false and has nothing to do with what I see here sitting with my mother's medical records in front of me. There is no way the police have looked at these because if they had, they would have seen that this doctor chose to end my mother's life without her permission, without my brother or myself giving permission. And if that's not a criminal offence, then I don't know what is. He had a motive in a, in a peculiar sort of way, which was that he was prepared to kill people if it saved his authority from being questioned or if it um, proved a point 